Okay, welcome back, everyone. This is um, section three of a series of uh, podcasts uh, with, uh, with James Hamill, a dentist in Ireland. Uh, this um, series is called Chrome Guided Smile Surgery in Under Two Hours Consistently. And uh, I like to always do just a little bit of an intro because, um, because as I always get the pushback, it's not a race. Fact is, if we can do it quicker, if we can do it quicker with great protocols, then everybody wins. Patient wins, doctor wins, team wins. So we wanted to um, just uh, help out with some protocols and some techniques that can quicken each step of this uh, of the lovely Chrome process. So we've already covered um, a few things: uh, patient management, um, uh, the pin guide, uh, the fixation base. I thought the next thing we could cover is um, site drilling. Uh, about um, site drilling and use of the guided kit, uh, because uh, I just I see I see a lot of issues with, um, with 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 guided kits in general, uh, but then a lot of it is um, efficiencies with the guided kit. Knowing the guided kit, site drilling is not usually the biggest problem. Usually, the biggest problem is implant uh, placement with mounts, and we'll talk more about that. But initially, site drilling. And you, you, you use Neodent, always use Neodent, or you've probably used other implants over the years. Um, you do well, some Southern. Cl cl yeah, clinically, clinically for Chrome, I've only used Neodent. So oh, for, your, for your patients and your surgery? For, for, my, for my own. But as, right. as I travel around, probably about 12 now, something like that, different systems. I suppose I've had to get to learn their guided systems because yeah. let's be very honest, um, when you go to some of these surgeries, uh, there's not a maybe a huge amount of familiarization with the kits, yeah, from the surgeon, from the staff, and also from the representatives of the, the reps, company. right? Don't know it, Which yeah, is, but and you know, but to be fair, Ireland, UK, I mean, guided surgery is not prevalent there, it's a very small percentage of the, I mean, what's yeah. the percentage? Well, Below I, I was recently lecturing in a room with about 40, let's say 40 doctor dentists in it and asked the question, who uses regularly guided surgery? And that number of hands. Yeah, zero, it. zero. Yeah. So, these, so the issues, they really come honestly because it's new to, yes. the, new to the islands, not new here at all, but we still see, you know, probably the same issues you see. Yeah. You know. Yeah, it, you know, all the kits are different but they have general themes through them that are quite similar. Um, but I think in terms of your site drilling, what you've said, if, if we're looking here at getting efficient uh, and if you know your kit, you can save a huge amount of time. Right. But, but you know, when someone's starting off using the kit, it's okay, what spoon goes into what? Do I need a spoon? What key? What length? It, it just... The, the whole language around it is alien to them. Yeah. And, you know, again, we see that the consistent problem where the doctor tries to take all that on to themselves, whereas they need to teach their team. So this should be a team training thing. Right. I've been to places, Alan, and I'm sure you have, where the guided kit's still in its box. Yeah. It's yeah. never been used before. Or not brought out, at least for the day. But yeah, yeah, very little experience with it, right? Right in the right, still the price tag is on it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so training, but, training is so important. And and knowing the kit because many of these, you know, with, with guided surgery, uh, many of these kits <clears throat> don't even have a short drill, not yes. short enough to contact the bone before you're guided. Yeah. And that is very very important with a lot of these surgical guides. The offset is such that you have to have a very short drill. To get the osteotomy started, or you, or at the get go, you're off. The word I use when, when I when I go and teach people to do it, there has to be some respect, and that's respect for the guide, but also respect for the kit. And by that I mean, it's not an excuse to switch your brain off and go, "This is a guide, this is a drill, everything should work absolutely perfect." There's techniques to it. It's a skill. Learning guided surgery is a skill, and you, you got to be prepared to give it some time to learn it, but you can't be heavy handed. If you pull and hawk at these things, things are going to move and yeah. flex, obviously right. less, much less with metal. But th there's little techniques that, that 
you know, that you have to use to overcome. But sometimes that's just about knowing your system. It's because, and that's one of the reasons that I just use that one implant system for doing Chrome because I know it so well. Right. And I can probably get that implant system to do things in certain types of bone that maybe some other people couldn't do um, because I know it so well. And, and maybe a tip with that system, whether that, that works for that system or others, is that you always never, and you always never um, undersize. No, I, 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 in all the cases I've done, I've never undersized. No never size. undersized. That's another always. And I thought that was totally yeah. unique because I, I almost never hear that. So I, so with Neodent, I use, and this isn't, adver, isn't meant to be an advert for Neodent by any means, but I use their drive implant for the maxilla. I use their helix for the mandible. And I don't under prep at mm. all now, mm. but I don't follow. And this, I, I was debating whether I would say this or not, <laughs> but but I don't follow their drilling protocol exactly. Okay. <clears throat> so when I go to teach it, I urge the, the, the dentist to follow their drilling protocol. One, because they're new to that, maybe they're new to the system, they're new to guided surgery. Um, they, the feel of it's different. So if you follow the protocol exactly as laid out by the company, generally speaking, I've found that they're more successful, those surgeries, they go with less problems. For, for myself, I only use a two mil twist drill and go straight to the final drill. Right, right. <clears throat> and that's it. Yeah. Um, and then I place my implant. That's one mm. thing I do. The second thing is I do is I go to depth and come out. I don't mess about. I don't go in and out. I don't tap. I, I just go into depth, come straight back out, and then I place my implant. Two drills, one site, don't change. Yep. Yeah. I mean, every time. We, we know that you can go up to a certain size, even a, a, a medium size implant with one drill. I mean, Blue Sky Bio has their direct cut drills, one drill. Well, so we know it's possible. Yeah. Uh, oh, listen. And, you know, you look at um, New York, Professor Aboud, Marcus Aboud over there, who's created Lucid drills. And, you know, his protocols are two or three drills, pretty much. I think there's yeah. three different ways you can use them. And sometimes it's starting with his twist drill and then finishing with the drill of the implant system that you're using. Ah, um, and, ah, right, right. you know, people will say, oh, what about heat of the bone and heating bone? Well, Marcus Aboud's work will, will tell you that it's your twist drill, your two mil drill that causes the most heat. The, 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 the twist is the final? You know, your, your first drill yeah, is the, the one that causes the most heat. Okay. Oh, okay. So what you're going to All use right. it no matter what. So, so his, his drilling protocol is, is really simplified. And um, so, you know, people say, oh, you have to go up all the different steps. Yeah. Okay. If that's what the implant company says and you're getting used to it, then yes. Yeah. But there are ways that you can bend some of those rules, but I, oh, I'm going to go back to the point that you only can do that when you really know your implant system. I understand. And really know the kits that you're using. Yeah. I mean, I, I see some systems where there's um, six, seven, eight drills used. Yeah. Depth yeah. wide, depth wide, depth yeah. wide. Yeah. And you're drilling for, for 45 minutes on, you know, four implants. So, yeah. Yeah. So, okay. so that, that I see of a lot of time in that, you know, my, my using that drilling protocol, you know, I'll have my osteotomies done in a couple of minutes. Yeah, they were very quick. They were very quick. And that the part that struck me was never, never undersized. Uh, and, and I've seen, you know, often the, I've seen the maxilla and the mandible undersizing and then using a torque wrench to go in and out, in and out, in and out, threading and pushing the bone. Very time consuming. I mean, pro probably works, but it's very time consuming. Um, and so holes are drilled and then the, then the implants are, are placed. And I, and I remember... Uh, when you were giving the presentation the the day before about how the surgery was gonna was gonna was gonna play out, you were meticulous about explaining the process of of observing and learning and timing your depth with your stop, and that might say well you might say well that's elementary, but <laughs> it's not because often almost every time when I when I watch these. Um, when I watch the implants and the mounts go in, they're going, they're going, they're going. They're watching how the threads are on the bone. 
because they, they, they want to have their implant at a certain depth. So they're rotating, watching that they're backing it out. They're going a little deeper. And I noticed that what you, you said, get the bone leveling, right. And then monitor your mount carefully, get it right. The first time, have your team confirming it. And while that mount is spinning around to the nub, you want to time it to where it stops and you're done. You're, you're done you're at done. that point. Yeah. To me, that comes down to go back to your planning. So whenever I plan a chrome case, I always ask the planners to place the implants one mil, minimum one mil below that red line. Now, yeah. the reason that I do that, Alan, is that if I, during surgery, I sometimes, maybe I remove a little bit too much bone, my implant's not going to be super crystal. And in everybody that I've trained over here, I've asked them to do that with the planners. Mm, said, mm. Even if they place them at the red line, you ask them to dip them a millimeter below because it gives you a little bit of flexibility. So whenever you're going to place your implants, I'm not looking at the thread. Right. Because I know that implant, <laughs> if, if I've done the bone correctly, which I hope I have, I don't have to worry about that implant posi vertical position. All I have to worry about is the rotation of that angle. And I follow the guide. I yeah. follow the guide totally. And I have total confidence that it's going to be in the right place. And, and that manifested itself in the abutments and the copings being the right position. I, I wasn't even in the room when you picked up the prosthetic, but you didn't touch the rapid appliance. No, no, no. You, you, you dropped it in. and Like it was six implants. Five of them were angled, I think. I just can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, there were... There were the five implants and four angled? Four angled. Right. Okay. So that's, that's a, that's a tall order. That that's tough. Very difficult because there are so many variables, but you put the, you put the rapid appliance on and you picked it up and it was no adjustment to it. And you almost always have to adjust the intaglio flare for the coping. Something's a little bit off. Cause I mean, with a, with it, with an implant, it's, it's a, a little bit dip and a little bit off you're adjusting because you're not going to back it out and rotate it. Right. You're going to compromise the, the prosthetic by doing it. So the other bit about about this bit of accuracy is that it, I go back to my point about respecting the guide mm. and respecting how you're drilling. So I've seen people on the distals when they're maybe putting a key in, there's a natural tendency to pull on the key whilst they're drilling. That is going to put you out slightly. It's not that the guide is wrong. It's that how you've used the guide has altered it. So um, whenever I'm drilling, I really want to be as passive on the metal as I possibly can be. And I'm really trying to think in my head, I'm really going to put this drill through the middle here. And I'm not putting lateral pressure on it. And if you do that, and then when you go to place your implant, you're really getting your implant started. You're making sure that the barrel of your implant driver is going to connect with the guide and the sleeve properly. Uh, all of those tiny little things make a difference whenever you come to your pickup. So as you know, any slight, if you're out anyway on the rotation, it'll throw things off. But if you add that then to maybe pulling on the guide when you're doing your osteotomy, and maybe not just getting your implant started perfectly right well into the osteotomy, and you mount those three errors up, right. you're going to be off on a comfortable prosthetic. Right, so right. that's all technique. We have, um, we have videos and um, 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 presentations on different kits out there, but the best thing to do is ask the company, ask the rep, if you're not 100% clear. <clears throat> I've, been to, I've been to a surgery with a doctor who's done many, many, many of these cases, and it was a particular implant company that has a very sophisticated mount for depth, for different tools, for rotation. It was the most, it, it's, it's complicated, but it's perfect. Okay. Had no idea what any of the indicators were on that mount. And right. so all the temp copings were going different directions, but we straightened them out and it was, yeah, it was you just, just, you have, you have to know the intricacies of the kit. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. All right. So site drilling implant placement. <clears throat> I thought maybe we would cover um, abutment and temp coping seating in the, in the yeah. next, in the next one. That that's, that's fine. Yeah. Cause that, okay. there's, there's definitely a few things there that uh, can help you in terms of efficiencies. Yeah, so important. No yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, Alan. So I'll, I'll see you for section four. Lovely. Enjoy the rest of your day.